and welcome back to another video in our series on reptiles brought to you by myself, Mark Perpetua from Reptile Encounters, in conjunction with Hudson Valley Reptile and Rescue. Now, growing up here in the Hudson Valley, one of the most exciting reptiles to discover in our woods was the black rat snake. Rat snakes are our largest snake here in this area, and they can grow to nearly six feet long. Throughout the East Coast, however, rat snakes belong to a group of snakes that come in many other varieties. And the rat snake I'm holding in my hands right now is from the deep south of the southern end of Florida called the Everglades rat snake. Try to figure out how this one got its name. But Everglades rat snakes are beautiful in color. They have a beautiful yellow to orange color with black pinstripes. And like our black rat snake, they are excellent climbers and spend a lot of time up in the trees where they'll feed on a variety of different things. When they're young, they'll eat small and knoll lizards, small birds, they'll eat eggs, and of course, as their name implies, they'll eat lots and lots of rodents. In order to kill their prey, rat snakes are constrictors. They grab their prey, wrap around it, and squeeze it until it no longer can breathe, its heart stops beating, and they're able to swallow it much more safely. Now, in areas where the <clears throat> Everglades rat snake and the yellow rat snake and the black rat snake intermingle throughout the East Coast, they have been known to hybridize or interbreed. And I happen to have with me today a snake that is a hybrid from a northern black rat snake and a yellow rat snake from the south. And this snake is showing some really interesting colors to develop. It's still showing some of its juvenile pattern, but as it starts to grow bigger, its colors are more chocolatey instead of black, and it's starting to show the pinstripe pattern. So we still have really no idea what this animal will develop into as an adult, as all rat snakes go through a color and pattern change from when they first hatch until when they're fully grown. Today, we're also gonna talk a little bit about pet snakes, however, and rat snakes can make really interesting pets, as you can tell how calm both of these snakes are. In fact, growing up, one of the most popular snakes in the pet trade, and still to this day, one of the strongholds is the corn snake, which is another member of the rat snake complex. It's a different species than the two in my left hand, but in the South, it's often referred to as a red rat snake because of its bright red coloration. But all these snakes together, uh, again, require about the same kind of care. And I'm gonna go ahead and free my hands up and we're gonna talk a little bit next about how to set up a proper cage and what kind of care to give these guys since corn snakes, as we mentioned, are probably the most popular snake out there in the pet trade today. Well, while corn snakes are a native species right here in the Southeast US, you walk into any pet store that sells reptiles and you're gonna find a number of corn snakes available. These guys became very popular nearly 30 years ago and to this day remain a staple as far as pet snakes are concerned. And corn snakes, they, they really are probably the best snake for any new snake keeper. These guys uh, have a lot going for them that make life easier on somebody that's learning to take care of a new snake. First of all, by being native to the U.S., they live in what we call a temperate region. And unlike many of the tropical snakes that might be available in the pet trade, corn snakes can tolerate some of the lower temperatures. And low temperatures normally for tropical snakes mean respiratory infections and illness. So these guys are a little bit more forgiving, but we're gonna talk about temperature when we talk about the proper cage setup. Speaking of cage setup, another thing that makes corn snakes very good as a beginner pet is their size. They're not big, heavy, bulky snakes and they don't get too long. Although they can grow as big as six feet for some of the bigger males, somewhere around four and a half feet would probably be considered an average. So these are animals that are easy to house in reasonable sized enclosures that will fit in a bedroom, a living room, your average household situation. They also are beautiful to look at. Smooth scales, beautiful colors, and by the way, they don't eat corn. If you take a look at their bellies, their belly pattern resembles old, wild, or what we used to call Indian corn, and it shows dark kernels mixed with the light kernels. Yeah, long before we had all yellow sweet corn, 
Corn had a lot of dark kernels mixed in. That's where the name came from. So feeding is another thing that you have to consider if you're going to keep a snake. He's a carnivore, and he's going to require rodents. But what's really cool about most pet snakes, especially corn snakes, is they'll accept what we call frozen thawed. You can buy them frozen. You don't have to deal with live mice, but make sure they're thawed out. Reptiles are cold-blooded. We don't want them getting a bad brain freeze when they eat. So make sure that their food reaches at least room temperature before it is offered. Okay, so if you decide that a corn snake is the right pet for you, here's a basic setup that I want to show you just so you have that good idea on how to get started. Uh, this is a 40-gallon reptile tank. It's 36 inches long, 18 inches deep, 16 inches high, and it is made to house reptiles. Uh, with snakes, they don't necessarily require a ton of room, but I always find giving them more room is a little bit better, especially if you want to see an animal that's active and going through some of its normal behaviors. At a bare minimum, however, I would give a snake at least half of its total length. So a 20-gallon aquarium, roughly a 20-gallon long, around 30 inches long, would be the smallest I would go for an adult corn snake. Uh, this setup here has a few of the basics that are necessary as well. You can use anything from newspaper, which is not very aesthetically pleasing, uh, to aspen bedding. The bedding we have in here is shaved aspen, and it's very different from pine or cedar, which was once a traditional used bedding for small rodents like hamsters and mice. Even with them, it's not really good anymore. We found that the aromatics in pine and cedar could cause a lot of respiratory problems, or especially cedar, if it gets in the water bowl, can leak out what are called tannins, build up tannic acid, which is not good for the animal. So aspen bedding, or even a quality reptile bark sold in your local pet store would be suitable. And these also make it a lot easier for spot cleaning. You can reach in, grab out the area they mess, Snakes eat infrequently, so they mess infrequently. Spot cleaning makes it a little easier. But once a month, once every two months, make sure you take out all the bedding, give it a good wipe down, and then put fresh bedding in to make sure your snake stays healthy and clean. Now, I mentioned a water bowl. Up front, we have a water bowl. I keep fresh water, clean water in with reptiles all the time. Uh, the snakes will go to the water to drink, and it's really kind of amazing to see. They stick their head in, you see their cheek muscles moving, and they slurp up water through the little tiny hole in their mouth where they flick their tongue out. And um, it's really kind of neat. But yeah, make sure they have fresh water. Don't just look at the water and go, oh, it's got water. If it's been in there for three or four days at room temperature and warmer, you're going to want to make sure you freshen it up, keep it nice and clean. Honestly, I've never had a problem that snakes live 25 years or more using tap water. But if you're uncomfortable, you can uh, let it sit 24 hours, let it dechlorinate like you might for a fish tank. But like I said, never had a problem with tap water on my reptiles. You'll also notice in the back is a hide. Sometimes snakes just want to get out of sight. They want to be in an area where they don't feel stressed out. So a hide is a good idea. But if your snake is well acclimated to you, um, he's going to be out and be active, just like our little friend is right now. And the cage decor is totally up to you. I like a branch in there, something for them to rub against if they're going to shed their skin. Uh, it gives a little decoration. Corn snakes are good climbers. So if you want to put something a little higher in there, this is just a quick setup to show you the basics. Um, your, your corn snake will start moving around, showing some climbing behaviors, and acting like a wild corn snake would. If he's gonna climb, however, you gotta remember, snakes are escape artists, so a good screen lid is really important, and some type of cage clip that's going to keep the screen lid down. I gotta admit, they're getting harder and harder to find, but don't rely on books and bricks. Give it something that's gonna make it secure so that your snake doesn't start wandering your house or your apartment. The other thing we wanna remember is reptiles are cold-blooded. So even though corn snakes do live in a part of the country where they will actually brumate, the reptilian uh, version of hibernation, in the wintertime, you want to keep it warm to keep it healthy and active and feeding. And there's two major ways you can do that. One is to get a quality heat pad that fits under the aquarium. Many of them are self-adhesive and will stick right to it. And the other, the other option is 
a ceramic heat emitter. These are great because they don't emit any light, but they do provide a constant source of heat. If you're going to go with either option, you want to make sure that you get an item that's small enough that it's only going to heat about half the cage. Behaviorally, reptiles thermoregulate or control their temperature from moving between hot and cool places. So even though they're cold-blooded, they can overheat and you want to give them a chance to escape. In a cage this big, it could even be useful to have two hides to give them a warm hide and a cool hide depending on the overall temperatures. Temperatures for a corn snake, they do well at around 80 to 85 degrees. Uh, a quality thermometer or a heat gun. They look just like the ones we take our temperature from our forehead with, but you can point it at a spot in the enclosure. If I want to know how, uh, what the temperature is of the hide, I can point the gun at the hide. If I want to know what it is in the basking area on the log, or if I want to know the reptile's temperature itself, I just put the little laser beam on the snake and I can get an accurate temperature. But in order to control that temperature, it's really advised to have a thermostat. Uh, there are a lot of quality thermostats on the market that you could probably purchase either online, Herbstat or Helix, or even in many of the high-end um, pet shops, multi-port timers like this are useful, and many of them come with built-in thermostats. So with a probe at the hot end, you'll be able to control. And even though they like 85, it gets cool at night. You can let them cool down by having the thermostat on the timer go to a nighttime drop as well, somewhere down as low as 70 degrees, and they'll be completely fine in that kind of environment. But the other reason that corn snakes are really interesting in pets is not just their size and their ease of care, but also the fact that they come in a great variety of colors. Sometimes when you go into a pet shop, if you're not familiar with corn snakes in the wild, you'll notice that they come in a great variety of colors that have been captively bred, selectively bred, uh, by studying their genetics and producing colors for the pet trade that don't exist out in the natural habitat. The one that we've been seeing crawling around in our, our demo enclosure here, this is what's called an amelanistic or AKA the albino. Albinism is a lack of melanin, but in many, many types of animals, there are other colors other than the brown and black melanin pigments. So a amelanistic corn snake is going to show all the reds and oranges that are also part of its natural color. Here we have a beautiful version that's got even lighter. He was in a hurry to come out and see everybody on camera. Uh, this is a beautiful example of how light even some of the oranges can be, and we'll call this one a creamsicle. In fact, there's so many names in the pet trade for all the different varieties and color morphs that have been produced. I'm going to be honest, I can't keep up with them. You're going to need an encyclopedia on corn snake morphs just to figure it out. And as I mentioned with rat snakes in general, that all these snakes go through some type of color change from a juvenile pattern to an adult color. Sometimes they go from patterns to striping. Sometimes they go from dull color to brighter color. And Hudson Valley Reptile Rescue had this snake brought to them at a very, very young age by somebody who got it in a pet shop and it was just simply sold as a fancy corn snake. It's not a normal corn snake in terms of coloration, normal in every other way in care, but it does have a beautiful light kind of caramel color. But there's no way of knowing exactly if that color is going to last since this snake is still a very young juvenile. And as it grows, it's going to be really interesting to see exactly what color or morph that this snake takes on. So as you can see, corn snakes have a lot of things going for them as far as being your first pet snake. I'm somebody who's been doing this for 30 years, working with Hudson Valley Reptile and Rescue. We probably have a combined over 50 years of experience. And even with all that, corn snakes are still a favorite. So um, hopefully you've learned a little bit more about taking care of these guys. And of course, with the advent of the interwebs, you can go out and look up all kinds of information and uh, make sure you do your homework as always with any type of pet you're going to buy. And uh, if you have any questions, drop them below in the comment section, or you can look us up very easily on the internet, Mark Perpetua's Reptile Encounters, 
or Hudson Valley Reptile and Rescue, and we'll be glad to give you some more information to help you if you're new to the reptile trade. So thank you very much for watching and be on the lookout for more videos coming in the future.